Many cities are already facing that, where time has become an increasingly rare commodity. So Airbus and Ital Design have linked up in a groundbreaking venture to imagine solutions, and the concept they've come up with is called Pop-Up. Pop-Up is a new mobility concept. It's multimodal. It combines ground with the air. It allows passengers a seamless and faster way getting from A to B using the city sky. It's a partnership between the airspace and the automotive sector. Two powerful sectors that come together to develop new technology, new concepts for uh, the future of smart cities. What they've come up with is a modular concept that can both fly autonomously using electricity and travel on street level or even on other modes of transport such as hyperloops. Using an app, passengers will be able to order the two-seater capsules from the airport or train station, for example, to their final destination using this kind of transportation system. I think right now the urban sky is quite um, underutilized, and that's exactly the proposition. Um, the uh, the grid-like uh, layout of, 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 of road um, doesn't actually do it for us. We think that by combining air and ground, we will get a much better uh, use of the space that we have uh, in our cities. While for the time being the project is a concept, something which looks very similar to this could be a reality within 7 to 10 years from now, because Airbus with its extraordinary We Make It Fly know-how and Ital Design, one of the most innovative players in the auto industry, are highly ambitious. Who knows what other partnerships could emerge? Well, we think that both companies believe really in finding the best solutions for people in, in future mega cities or in generally in transport. So uh, Airbus is doing this on their way, in their field, and we are doing it on our ground-bounded transportation, so trains and automobiles. So when we combine these skills um, into a research partnership, what it is, then we find very dedicated people on both sides. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we take down the boundaries between these uh, different specialities and find the best solution for future megacities. And with this idea, we came up with a concept that combines the best of both worlds.
Hyperloop One has signed an agreement with Dubai's Roads and Transport Authority to build the world's first Hyperloop system. Hyperloop One's system will connect Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Its stations, called Hyperportals, will be located in the city centers. Passengers will travel in pods, which come in four different configurations – cargo, coach, meeting, and lounge. The pods will pick up passengers at gates and travel autonomously to an underground level. There, they will be loaded inside a transporter capsule. Each transporter capsule will carry four pods. The capsules will be propelled by compressed air using magnetic levitation which eliminates friction inside a tube kept at a near vacuum to eliminate air resistance. They can travel at a speed of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. The Hyperloop will reduce what's now a two-hour car trip between Abu Dhabi and Dubai to just 12 minutes. Hyperloop One said passengers inside the pods will not feel any discomfort, despite the extreme speeds. The capsules will stop at the Hyperportal upon arrival, while the autonomous pods can either stop at the gates or continue beyond the Hyperportal to take passengers to their destinations in the city. Hyperloop One said in a press release that the infrastructure does not have to work with the pods alone. It could also work with other self-driving vehicles. How do you envision the Hyperloop changing the way we live? To connect two major cities that are normally uh, six, seven, eight, nine hours apart within 15 to 30 minutes changes the way we live. We're living in areas that are completely overfilled. Mm -hmm. uh, we're sitting in traffic every single day for hours. So. And you think the Hyperloop could be the solution? I think the Hyperloop is for sure one of the solutions. A possible solution, maybe, but it's far from a reality. This concept of humans traveling around in tubes has been around for more than a century. Then, in 2013, Elon Musk drafted up actual blueprints and put the challenge of building it to the engineering community. And as it turns out, there were a few willing to try. Hyperloop transportation technologies took on the challenge, but quickly realized they didn't have the design expertise. Enter UCLA. The engineering aspects of this, they're actually quite simple. It's really the design that is the most technically challenging. What's so challenging is it's an unconventional system. And so you sort of have to invent everything from the ground up. The track is an entirely different element. The station is entirely different. The process of boarding is different. So as architects, what we're trying to do is stitch together the technology, the social change, and the human experience. So do we know what it's going to feel like to be traveling at 700 miles an hour in one of these tubes? You'll accelerate. And you'll feel that physically. You'll feel that as a thrust, like a very fast, powerful car, like a Tesla. You will feel almost no sense of motion once you're at speed. You're mainly going to experience getting there and stopping. Each year, this UCLA grad program takes on a big problem and tries to solve it. The Hyperloop's biggest problem? Making tube travel comfortable. So this is kind of like the Hyperloop think tank yes, design yes. center right now. Mm -hmm. What are these models over here? So we have two sets of models. The first ones here at the back, they were really uh, study models that were investigating. These are more of a finished product that investigate more of the interior situation and also the sitting. So these are all the options mm -hmm. of the capsules. Of what the about capsule. the stations here? So same thing with the station. This station is probably the most compact station and it really, uh, the entire activity actually happens almost here. This is more still uh, of a lounge uh, shopping area. This is where that, you get your magazines, yes, your coffee. But still everything happens on the go. This one looks very complicated here. Yes, it is maybe not as complicated as it is mm, Grand. The students were really inspired by Grand Central Station and this station really is able to hold 6,000 passengers. 6,000 passengers? Within one hour. But the idea is not to be in the station, at the station for an hour. This is the interesting one because it uses a very different system. You come here on the road system, you're dropped off and this is in a way your pod. So you know, you need to know with your phone probably it's which... It's almost like your terminal. Which yes, one this you is get, your terminal. Which one you get dropped off yes. at. You're traveling at speeds of hundreds of miles an hour. How could this possibly be safe? 
In railroads, most accidents were all human factors. So we are in a closed system. We are complete, completely managed by a computer system. There's no human factor that can actually create those issues. How much money have you guys raised here? Zero. How are you going to get this off the ground? Innovation is done in teams. It's not done by a single person. Do you feel like you're working on a project that's really going to change the future? Oh, absolutely. If I have a date and I want to see the opera in San Francisco, I can literally do that and be back in time to go to sleep in my own house. I mean, that's the nature of the kinds of disruptive change that this can bring into. Be able to be part of this effort is a dream come true.